Welcome to Lexington, the Bluegrass State, and to many the center of the college basketball universe with thoroughbreds, Wildcats, and a blue blood basketball program that calls this Rupp Arena one of the great home court advantages. John Calipari's won 95% of his games. Rupp Arena, a singular college basketball cathedral that packs more than 20,000. And when John Calipari and the Kentucky Wildcats are rolling, Rupp Arena is a rocking. Big Blue Nation is ready tonight for the Georgia Bulldogs, Jimmy. And the Georgia Bulldogs are led by Anthony Edwards. And when you're in consideration for the number one pick in the next NBA draft, games on the road in a tough environment with the bright lights against a top 25 team, those film gets judged critically by NBA scouts. And that's exactly where we are tonight, guys. Big ball game for Georgia and Kentucky. And you know what they say? What's that? The film don't lie. The film don't lie. The film don't lie. You ready? I'm ready. I'm born ready. Let's go. This is Super Tuesday. Get him in. And give me one more, Jimmy. Play hard. Looking forward to it, everyone. Welcome to ESPN and our Super Tuesday. It is presented by Progressive. We are set to tip. Rematch Georgia-Kentucky first game. Kentucky, 178-69. Now on the road gets real difficult for the Georgia Bulldogs, who have lost three of their last four. And the last two road games by 20 and 32 points. Ravi Kentucky is trending in the right direction. And you look at how they defend right now, their offensive efficiency numbers, their three-point shooting is not great, but it's on the trend on, in SEC games. John Calipari with a lot of pieces that you have to deal with in January, February, into March. Nick Richards has been outstanding all season long. He's working a two-man game with Ashton Hagens. Six on the shot clock, baseline jumper it goes. And a good start for Ashton Hagens, who barks at that Georgia bench. A little bad blood. Of course, Hagens from Georgia. Originally thought about going to Georgia. Ends up here at Kentucky. Same story for the great Anthony Edwards, who thought about Kentucky, ended up staying at home and going to Georgia. And we're going to get a three-second call. Yeah, there will be a little extra juice tonight in the building between the triplets of Kentucky, those three guards especially zeroed in on Anthony Edwards, who is in consideration for the top three or four picks in the next draft. These Kentucky guards have a lot of pride, a lot of moxie about them. Hard to handle. Give and go, ball out of bounds. That'll be a turnover. You take a look at the Kentucky starting five. They're two and one with this lineup. Seventh different lineup used this season. And there you see John Calipari. Last time you saw him, he was getting thrown out of a game. Uh, Kentucky ended up winning. But it's interesting, you know, you kind of like to reduce your rotation to seven or eight guys. He's currently watching some guys play the best they have all year. So you're looking at nine productive players, and that's uh, probably one or two too many. What a luxury to have, though. Emmanuel quickly off to a fast start. He is Kentucky's best player right now on both ends of the floor. He's every bit the defender I think that Ashton Hagens has been over the last year and a half. And offensively, this kid is clicking at all cylinders. Severe Wheeler, the point guard. Going to start the game off trying to post Anthony Edwards. A challenge for Tom Crean right there is move number five around offensively, not letting hang and settle for three-point shots early in this game. Edwards misses his first. Hagens, E.J. Montgomery didn't score a lot in the last game, but played great defense, and that was noticed by John Calipari. John Calipari entrusting his team starting tonight Ravi, to make their own play calls. They have three or four things they can go through. They're through action, circle, Vegas. Ashton Hagens now taking responsibility for the play calls, especially in the first half, away from John Calipari's bench. You discuss how he wants, uh, Calipari wants his team to be more free as players, Jimmy. He said today he wants to call less things. He wants to be as, as much a cheerleader as he is a coach. Why? Because that means his players have taken ownership. It's their team now. At some point, he told us they become empowered. And at that time, he says he knows they've taken the next step. He feels like they've just taken that next step. Happened in the last game, he says. I noticed we became a player-driven team. 
and Hagen's with a floater. What a start for the Wildcats up six to nothing. Yeah, yeah Hagen's just very determined to bull rush the rim. And that half court offense, when Kentucky guards are everywhere, when they catch it going downhill, hard to guard. If Edwards is off, where do the points come for Georgia? That's tough, and it's blocked by Richards. Kamara's three no good. Hammonds with a follow. Yeah, there, there's your answer, Ravi. It's Rayshon Hammonds. Uh, this is a guy that can make a three, can get on that offensive glass. He's a hard match at that four position. Tom Green's been critical of his team, including Hammonds off of their brutal loss to Mississippi State. He said that Hammonds' effort was pitiful. Montgomery blocked from behind by Kamara. He's going to pick up his second foul here early, so he's going to have to come out of the game. Been a challenge for Tom Crean. Even at the shoot around today, it seemed like the most enthusiasm was coming from the former Marquette and Indiana head coach, not his players. No, it really wasn't. And this is a team that's young, and they're, they're struggling coming into Rupp Arena, not sure of their identity right now on the offensive end, with the exception of Anthony Edwards. I love what Tom told his guys, though. If you have any chance to win in Rupp Arena, you have to go to battle when that ball's on the backboard. If you're Georgia tonight, if you don't want to rebound, you don't want to win. He sent the message. We'll see if the message was received. He gave that last foul not to Kamara, but instead to Hammonds. A.J. Montgomery makes it both. His outstanding defensive effort, Montgomery, was in that victory in which Calipari got thrown out. And Montgomery was cited for his defense against Jimmy Witt of Arkansas. Yeah, Jimmy Witt came in after a 30-point ball game, and E.J. Montgomery, the link, just took Jimmy Witt out of the game for Arkansas. Cold start for Edwards. Higgins kicks to the corner quickly. He's been a three-point machine. He misses there. Montgomery with the putback. And it's 10-2, Kentucky. It's difficult to box off a fast transition push, which Kentucky just threw at Georgia. Hard to box off transition push. It's hard to box off straight line drives. Hammond's a pretty good three-point shooter for a guy his size, guarded by Montgomery, and the ball deflected back to Wheeler. Wheeler can get in amongst the trees. It's what happens when he does. Just can't finish. Hey, look at here, look at here, look at here. Ball to Dykes, who is playing to the crowd at Rupp. <laughs> Spinning it on his finger. What a start for the Wildcats. Welcome back, everyone. Ball thrown out of bounds. There's Dykes way down towards center court. They're trying to spin that ball on his fingers, which was, I'd say, a C. So we're hoping with your own whiteboard we can do better than that. Well, we're talking about Anthony, Anthony Edwards offensively. His entire life, he has lived in the slots in this part of the floor, Ravi. So the challenge for Tom Crean, not only in this game, but all season long, is to move him out of the slot to the corners, post him up some. This is a guy his natural instincts. If it was a pickup game, he would play in this slot right there, the right side, and really go to work. Kentucky has to know if Anthony Edwards, number five, when he's in that slot of the floor right there, that high extended wing three area, this cat's going to work now. And Kentucky has to lock in because he can really yo-yo bounce you and get downhill. But his instincts now taken to that part of the floor in Kentucky, they have to be dialed in on where he likes to score from. Some huge games there, 37 points against Michigan State, 24 against Chaminade. He's 0 for 2 in the game so far tonight. Hagens, Richards down low, missed it. Rebound, Hammonds, Hagens nearly deflected it and kept it. We just discussed how Calipari wants this to be a player-driven team. There's no more consummate example than what just happened in their huddle. He looked directly at Ashton Hagens and said, I'm not talking. Tell me what you see. Tell them what you see and what we should run. He was also extremely, extremely proud of E.J. Montgomery and how aggressive he opened this game, guys. Hagens gets fouled. He'll shoot a couple. It's interesting, Marty, thanks, because Montgomery is being pushed by a couple of guys now. Nate Sestin is the guy that will push Montgomery for playing time. We're starting to see Keon Brooks play a little bit better. He'll push him for playing time. 
And Johnny Juzang doesn't play the same position, but Calipari has shown he's not afraid to use three guards at a time. Nope. So he's always being pushed, and you hope as a coach that the player responds to that. All those things you just described are, to me, the signs of a healthy ball club in the middle of January. And that's the, those Kentucky practices continue to be very competitive. And you cannot take a possession off in the eyes of John Calipari. Montgomery is, if anything, he could become the guy that buys into. I'll be our lockdown defender coach at that three, four, or five spot. He's got the link. I think he's got the IQ to do it. Higgins has six early points in the first meeting. He took 10 quick shots. He said his heartbeat was racing. He was trying to do a little too much in front of his fans that were in Georgia. Tonight he said, I'm going to play a little slower pace. He's off to a good start. And all of a sudden, Georgia's made a couple of buckets to pull within five. Yeah, that last basket, Tom Crean again, he posts up Anthony Edwards. The lob to Nick Richards, but he, he's posting up Anthony Edwards. It attracted so much defensive attention, they forgot about the backside of the play. 14-7, one of those assists that you'll take if you're Ashton Eggins. He threw that up, and the way things are going for Nick Richards, he basically redirected it into the bucket. Next on ESPN, number eight, Duke. You'll get a chance to see the Blue Devils host Miami at Cameron Indoor. You can see it live on the ESPN app. Blue Devils beat the Hurricanes uh, by 33 in Coral Gables January 4th. They've won three straight, four or five against Miami. And of course, the former Dukey Zion Williamson makes his NBA debut tomorrow night, 9.30 ESPN. You know, last year, Zion Williamson and, and Ja Morant from Murray State, they were must-watch TV, like you're afraid to blink or go to the kitchen and come back, you might miss something. We don't have that kind of guy in college basketball this year. Duke right now kind of struggling with the injury to Wendell Moore on the defensive end of the floor. Wheeler got in the paint, threw it up, missed another one. And just some Zion numbers at Duke, over 22 points again. You felt like he could score 50 every night if he wanted to. Hagen shot off the rim, and Hammond's tough rebound in traffic. Kentucky so far owning the paint battle in this game. Hammond's tough shot. Ooh, halfway down. And a good job by Trent Gresham, who's going to get fouled by Tyrese Maxey. So he'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Maxey picks up his first. But for folks who were kind of just tuning in to college basketball, while Zion was the consensus, no brain number one guy, there's a couple of guys that are going to be in consideration for number one. Remember, the Atlanta Hawks have it. Edwards is an Atlanta kid. Imagine him in the backcourt with Trey Young. That's pretty special. But there's a few others that are going to be considered for that number one spot. Well, I, I think it's going to boil down to three guys, LaMelo Ball and James Wiseman and Anthony Edwards, one, two, and three right now on the NBA ESPN mock draft. Halliburton, I, I just don't see those guys moving up within that top two or three. The question for Anthony Edwards is, will he connect the dots on the floor that says, okay, he's a franchise-changing all-star type player over the next three or four years? What, I, what do I mean by that? Is he going to be a guy that could just go get his own but refuse to understand the game, connect the dots with his teammates, make them better, all those things, move without the ball? He's a young kid, Ravi, but the NBA scouts this week. Those are the questions they have on Anthony Edwards. Hammonds launches another three. Last one went halfway down. This one is off. Substitutions in the game for John Calipari and through that guy, Johnny Juzang. They'd love to see him start making some shots. A terrific shooter out of California. That ball blocked by Brooks and the rebound missed by Hammonds. Wheeler just can't finish against the length in the SEC. Maxi got bumped and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. An interesting time of the game. Hagins is out. You got Maxi and quickly playing guard. So Calipari doing a little more coaching with Ashton on the bench. Georgia has become a little bit more of a left side of the floor transition game with Severe Wheeler because he's left pod, but he can get to the rim. The rim decision for this guy, talking about Severe Wheeler, they have to progress to the next level because time and time again, his layups are getting erased by the link in the SEC. Nate Sestino. Uh, another one of those grad transfers that seem to be sort of the norm for Kentucky the last couple of years. Of course, Reed Travis last year. And Nate, Nate Sestina, Rab, he's only used on 14% of Kentucky possessions when he's in the game. Only Khalil Whitney has a lower percentage of usage. And this is a guy that John Calipari trying to figure out how do I get him another two or three three-point attempts per game. 
They're going to get quickly holding Edwards. And a lot of folks that watch basketball would love to see Edwards do this a little more. Either drive downhill, or if you have a guy your size or sure to post him up, his body, remember we did the Auburn game? Yeah. You called your buddy Gus Miles on after the game, the coach of the football team. What did he say? He said, man, what a body on number five from Georgia. And that's a guy that knows big boy bodies in the SEC. What I like about Tom Crean has done with number five in black so far, he's immediately posted him in this game. He's not running action and getting two or three screens to get him there. He's running to the block, spreading the offense, and saying five go to work. It has not paid off yet for number five. What it has paid off for is a couple of his teammates with hard cuts to the rim. 16-8 here. Harris just picked up his second foul. He aggressively went after that rebound. Edwards is 0-3 from the floor. See the Juzang, and he will launch and knock it down. They want to see a more confident shooter, and I think you're starting to see it with two quickies. Yeah, there was no hesitation by Juzang. That, that's the gamble of Tom Crean in this building. You can extend your defense. You can give up a three-point look on the back end or potentially a lob to the rim with Kentucky's length. Wheeler the kick. That three-pointer halfway down. Keon Brooks clears. Shot missed by Christian Brown. One of the few play calls from the sideline so far from John Calipari. Kind of makes sense with Maxi the freshman out there, and Hagen's about to set to check back in. Pull up Maxi. Little too strong. Sestina had it and lost it. Nate Sestina has to sprint out of his ball screen to get one more separation step from the defense. He'll have three point looks if he does. Three point shooter on the floor, too, who struggled shooting, but Tyree Crump is a three point shot every time he has the basketball and he's got it there before he hands it off. Well, quickly just blew up the dribble handoff opportunity between Wheeler and Anthony Edwards. Four on the shot clock, penetration and a foul on Nate Sestina. Christian Brown, the foul. Take a look at Johnny Juzang. He missed a couple of games because of an illness, but he is stroking the J here. No hesitancy. Two feet on the floor, two eyes on the rim. Johnny Juzang says, I'll take it. John Calipari redefined college basketball protocol. Why shun the greatest prospects? Because their tenure in Lexington might be short. Embrace the pace. Welcome the stars. Demand excellence. If you can't guard them, you can't be in the game. Demand selflessness. Get into it, bitch. Clap for these guys. Demand team first, not me first, in a society that suggests otherwise. Coach them hard. Love them harder. Turnover takes time, and at UK, time is truncated because the league beckons. Surrender to the process, for it is proven. Proven indeed. The volume of players John Calipari has sent to the NBA during his tenure here at Kentucky is staggering. 38 players have been selected in the NBA draft, 29 of which were first round picks, 21 lottery selections, three of those number one overall selections, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, and John Wall. It's just remarkable to me, gentlemen, how he takes these young men who've been told they were the greatest player in the world since they were 12 and turns them into 18. Yeah, some of them probably before, Marty, they were 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to go along with those numbers, the other number that a lot of people will focus on are the amount of money in contracts that those 29 first-round picks and others have signed. You know what that number would be? You want to take a guess? Close to a billion? Close to two billion. Two billion. So it is close to one billion. It's two billion. billion. Man. That's B billion. With a B. There's no place to hide at Kentucky as a player. And Cal is very clear in his recruiting process what he's going to demand and what you'll get out of it. And guys that buy in progress, guys that don't won't. Isolate and Hagen's in the middle part of the floor to go one-on-one. -on -one. Spin move and an easy bucket for Ashton Hagen. His size, his strength is dramatic. As far as where he was last year, so is his maturity. And yes, Cal, if uh, there's any players that he has, speaking of what Marty just did, taking these guys for one year, if they're staying for two, the rise in his playing level, his maturity, his leadership, very few have matched what Hagens has done that quickly. 
With the strength of Hagen, Dravi, he, he can bounce defenders off of him when he gets downhill between the pipes like he did on that last play. Boy, that ball is popping for Kentucky right now. Tyree Crump, nope, continues to struggle. Gresham thought about it. Ran right into Nick Richards, and now we'll get a call. Kind of a late whistle. Talk about Hagen's ability to just bounce defenders off of him. Tremendous leg strength, and that's where the game's won. It's a foot battle, not a hand battle or an arm battle between the pipes, and Hagen's is going to win those more times than he's not. You know, interesting on that last transition play by Georgia. It was Nick Richards, I believe, challenging the three-point shot. Georgia doesn't run in transition with a lot of rhyme or reason. They get you cross-match. And if you're Kentucky tonight, Richards is going to have to guard a one or a two at, point, at some point in those transition plays. Manuel quickly misses that one. A rare one of five effort from three-point in his last game, but quickly has been, as Jimmy said, their best player. And there's a block from behind by quickly. Prior three games, Emmanuel quickly had taken 13 threes and knocked down 10 of them. Right now, Georgia getting fairly dependent on that three-point shot and making none of them. Look out. Maxi goes up and over and count the basket. Tyrese Maxi leapfrogged Ty Fagan. That's the fifth team foul on Kentucky, and they've had back-to-back Foul problems in the last two games. Maxi takes the head fake and gets over the top of the shoulders of Fagan. Fortunately, both players come up fine. And the foul is called on not Maxi, but instead EJ Montgomery, who goes to the bench. Are they settling for the three-point shot, or is it just a feel that I have the way they're playing the game, Georgia? I think the Kentucky's forcing them right now to take it, Rabbi, because Kentucky just smothering defensively on the perimeter, pressuring the basketball, and containing at the same time. And Georgia's struggling to get clean looks. That length of Kentucky. I call those three guards the triplets because they're all the same size with long arms that climb up into you, bobs with the basketball. Becoming a juggernaut on the defensive end. This young Kentucky team. Hammonds goes to the bench. It's a big deal with nine minutes to go. His second foul. So you'll see Rodney Howard come into the game. A freshman, 24. 6'11 out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. A huge, huge body. Hasn't gotten a lot of minutes. Nick Richards. I don't know if he's player of the year conversation, but certainly his development from last year to this year, you could just tell John Calipari willing Nick Richards to the level he's at now. And to simplify it, it's like the light bulb went off. Well, you now have to match his energy, and that's something that we have not used to describe Nick Richards so far in his career. Here's the most important thing about Nick Richards, number four. He didn't con himself when John Calipari has been prodding him along from the back side and from the front side, trying to at times drag him along. What, what do I mean by that? He's been honest with his self-evaluations. Tom Crean talked about how terrific Dwayne Wade was at that not conning himself and that self-evaluation. Nick Richards has not ran from hard. A lot of guys do. Richards has not done it, and he's now being rewarded. He's got four in the game, 22-13, 8.45 to play, first half. The other thing Richards has done, I was just about to say it prior to that, and he didn't appear to leave his feet, perhaps with the body gets fouled. He has stayed out of foul trouble. And for the most part, teams are going to start trying to get him into foul trouble. Well, you, you have to throw different looks at Nick Richards, and teams are starting to figure that out. This is a this is a beautiful kid that I've, I've loved watching to getting to getting to know him and just kind of finding more about what makes Nick Richards tick. Uh, just has a tremendous feel and love for his mom and the sneakers tonight. These are custom made. Mom is a survivor. You see the coaches tonight with the sneakers for the. Uh, cancer awareness, but his mom, Marion, is a breast cancer survivor. You see John Calipari coaching tonight all across the country for the most part, but Nick Richards is a beautiful kid, and his, uh, his ability to run Ravi, if Nick Richards outruns you for 28 minutes, you're in trouble if you're the opponent. The 
Kentucky playing at a rapid pace. You generally, of course, get accustomed to seeing Kentucky peaking in March. And there is a feeling, and they'll be tested against Texas Tech on Saturday. What a game that should be in Lubbock is Kentucky and Texas Tech do battle as part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. That's on ESPN and the ESPN app. Started with Kansas and Tennessee at Fog Allen. 8 o'clock, it's number one Baylor. They're in Gainesville. They take on Florida. And Mike White's team plays a different style. We'll see how they do against the number one team in the land, Baylor. But what a test. The only SEC Big 12 matchup between two teams that are ranked is Kentucky, Texas Tech. Yeah, I, I, when Gonzaga's healthy, they're, they're the best team in college basketball right now. I know Baylor has the number one ranking, but our game in the Lubbock, Kentucky's going to be up against a, an, an intensity, a togetherness, a preparation like none they have seen this year with Chris Beard and that Texas Tech program. They are the real deal. And Kentucky is going to have to fight their way out of Lubbock with a win Saturday evening. Kumani Kamara goes to his right hand. Nice move on the baseline for the freshman Kamara. Part of a great class that Tom Crean has. Edwards overshadows everybody. But Kamara, a promising player, the lefty. Georgia's best offense. This is just size you up. The guy with the ball just size you up and attack one-on-one. -on -one. Tom Crean runs a lot of good motion. He gets that ball side to side. But at the end of the possession, they have the ability to just go at you, and you better lock in. All right, Fagan stepped in to that one and knocks down a three. And they're hanging around, Georgia, down by just four. Yeah, they're hanging around, and Georgia has gotten practically nothing out of Anthony Edwards in this game. Georgia now with a 2-3 zone. They will follow through certain actions by Kentucky. That's settling right there early. They're going to get Fagan as he fouled Nick Richards. Maybe Coach Cowell will have to do a little coaching tonight with 7.23 to go and a four-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Interesting story Saturday John Calipari said we didn't have much going on so he kind of got into it with the officials and you watch the officials they will both signal technical you get two technicals you get thrown out of the game now, now there was that sort of motion to say you're gone but ultimately he only had one technical then he said once I got one I'm gonna get my money's worth because I've been thrown out. And eventually he did get tossed. The team came back and won fairly convincingly. So maybe that's why he realizes they can do this without me. Because I wasn't there yeah. and the team played a lot better. He uh, he got tossed with eight eight minutes and 19 seconds to go in the game. I texted John Calipari with about three minutes ago and said, Coach, your team looks really well coached over the last five minutes. <laughs> and he responded with a LOL and I, I bet you're right. He said, but it's not over. And I said, you better make your free throws. And then he went crickets at that point. Right. I, I put the concern right back on him. Nice of you to do that. <laughs> he was already in such a rosy That's mood. A <laughs> Thanks, such man. a lonely feeling in a locker room all by yourself, you know. Start going through players' bags and see who's got the best snacks and just trying to pass the time. Nobody texts more than Jimmy does. We'll find out the list of 50 people that he texted no, just between our last game. You know, he's sitting there by guy. himself, and you just think, what, what's he doing in there? Did you ever get thrown out of a game? Yeah, once. What'd you do? What'd you say? He can say it. I, I went back to the dorm and started studying. My own head coach threw me out. <laughs> There's a steal by Higgins. We got Sestina ahead of the floor for the flush. Ashton Hagen's length wreaking havoc. And after a 7-2 run for Georgia, Kentucky opened up an eight-point lead. Trent Gresham knocks down a three. It's a Georgia team that has not shot the ball, ball well in SEC play, coming in at 27%. That last pass by Hagen's was a field pass as much as a C pass. He felt Sestina and kept that ball one more bounce, and it was perfectly delivered. Watch Hagen's here, Ravi, on the steal. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of crowd, a lot of bodies for him to work through. And he just feels Nate Sestina running on his right side as much as anything. And with the left paw, puts it right out in front of Sestina in stride. Beautifully done by Ashton Hagen. By mistakes, it's Donnell Gresham, not Trent Gresham. It's Donnell Gresham who knocked down that three. 
sustained it to the bench. At what point, as a coach, would you like to see that rotation get down to 7-8? Because we're seeing tonight, they've got some options, Kentucky. Well, I, I think what John likes is the competitiveness for that eighth and ninth spot to move up to that sixth and seventh spot. You never, you never want to lose that. You want to keep the pressure on your guys to stay in the rotation. But I think as you start getting closer to February and to March, John Calipari has always kind of got down to his seven guys, and, and, and you just ride him. But you know, you're always one injury away or a sprained ankle away, kind of like the Petrushev kid at Gonzaga right now. And Mark Few trying to hang on to that top one or two spot with a short list. Like a baseball team, you can never have too much starting pitching. There you go. And Anthony Edwards is not involved in this game offensively for Georgia. Can he impact the game in other areas? Right now on the road, only down three. He's 0 for 3, and Hagen's play, it's at least once a game. Catch the ball in the corner, foot gets extended, and because that three-point line's been pushed back, guy steps out of bounds. Well, there's what he's done. I talked about in the open. This film, this game will be really scrutinized by NBA scouts. Talk with them before the game this week. They want to see if you're a potential number one pick. How do you do on the road in a tough environment against a top 25 team, especially as a guard? Great cut by Ty Fagan on a pass from Dunnell Gresham. Georgia again, right? They got the ball going downhill. Tom Hill, uh, Tom Crean actually lifts his offense in practice to what I call the four-point line. He wants his guys to get it that high so you catch it coming downhill in stride. There's a turnover. Maxi wanted Hagens to cut. Things not going Kentucky's way right now. Let's not forget the first meeting of this season between these two teams. Georgia led by a half dozen at halftime. Gresham, another good move, and John Calipari sees his team now trailing. He's got to take Maxi out of the game, bring Juzang in. As well he should. Maxi just no resistance at all on the ball. Part of a 9-0 run back in 30. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey defensively, he's going to get caught up in just a little bit of a ball screen, but not near enough. Nick Richards, Ravi had backed off far enough and said under, under, under. Maxey just not with enough urgency, and uh, Georgia once again turned to the corner by Donnell Gresham and Tyrese Maxey. Going to sit and think about it. That turnover, a near other turnover. Hagens, the alley oop. Nick Richards took it off the backboard and threw it down with the left hand. Nick Richards had four of those similar plays in the first matchup because Georgia was coming off of Nick Richards on any dribble penetration. Will they stay attached as this ball game goes on? Because that's always a threat with four and white. Look at this guy's energy talking about Nick Richards. He's got eight. And a big mismatch down low with Richards and Kamara. Quickly, baseline. And he resets in the corner for a three. That quickly three-pointer is exactly what John Calipari wanted to see. He said to his team in the huddle there during the timeout, stop settling for threes, but when you are going to shoot, make sure you're ready to catch and shoot. He doesn't feel like when they get the ball, they're ready to shoot it as they get a run out for Brooks. And they're on a run, Marty. 35-29, the timeout paid off for Cal and the Cats. And Big Blue Nation is up on its feet. A 7-0 run. Fueled by Nick Richards and Ashton Hagens. And the best three-point shooter on the team, Emmanuel Quickly. Yeah, he's shooting 57% is quickly in conference play. Juzang would have had a clean look, but he didn't get far enough in the corner to start with. And then quickly just follows the pass and a violent cut to the corner. And Kentucky, their overall team speed at all five spots, hard to handle. In the overall number one pick in the draft. What do you say? Seth, I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on it right now. I, I see the potential, but the NBA values consistency. And this is a guy right now in this game on a big stage has played 12 minutes 0 for 3. Think about this. 
Georgia has missed 20 shots in this game. Anthony Edwards, no offensive rebounds. Number one picks overall. They find a way to impact the game in this type of situation. This is a hard spot for Georgia right now. Number five needs to respond right this second. The flop there didn't get called. There's an offensive rebound. And I think they're going to look at Anthony Edwards perhaps for that flop. The question marks for Anthony Edwards are, again, connecting the dots. And that's learning how to play the game. More than just settling for those deep threes and those ooh and ah moments he can throw at you with those slot jump shots, yo yo with the ball. Fight defensively, fight on the glass. Get out in transition, get on the offensive glass. Winning plays that guys like Zion Williamson and John Morant made last year. I need to see out of this kid. When he's playing well, pretty typical of a teenager, there's a great joy about the way he plays. When he doesn't, that's gone. And so far tonight, it's gone. He had that joy during the shoot-around earlier today. Big smile. He can light up a building yes, like can. this. A, a joyful kid, a playful kid. He likes his teammates. His teammates like him. All, the, all those things are there. But the parts of the game now, that, that word consistency, for those top couple of draft picks, it's huge in the NBA. It, it's huge with me. I mean, consistency in my life. Chick-fil-A, yep. Lulu Lemon Boxers, yes. and, and water. I mean, I know what I'm getting every time in those situations. Right, way too much information on the Lulu Lemon no, Consistency is important. Sorry, Marty. Ravi talking about <laughs> Edward's smile is accurate. It's a beautiful smile. He has a great disposition, but he doesn't seem to have the most intense personality, which leads to something Tom Crean told us today at Shoot Around that I found to be fascinating. He said, we're in a play just to play society. He said, if you love to play, then you love to win. And if you love to win, then you love to work. Rarer still, he told us, are those who hate to lose more than they love to win. And then he said, Right now, we don't have any of those. Quickly's going to try to plead his case that he was shooting. He wasn't, but he's trying. And that's a very good point. And how do you distinguish when you have the players on the floor and they'll profess, oh, I hate to lose. I, I hate to lose more than I like to win. And how do you kind of go through that with your detector up? You follow them around for a 24, 48-hour period and, and say, okay, if, if you tell me you hate to lose, then, then show me. Are you in the gym? Are you studying film? Are you taking care of your body? Are you serious with your workouts? Do I trust you in the locker room? Do you like the grind part of the game? And there's not near enough of those dudes in, in college ball, those guys that truly hate to lose. They say it with their lips. They don't back it up with their actions. And I think John Calipari's got some of those guys. I think this is a very hungry team for Kentucky in terms of they want to win. They want to win bad. Where does Chick-fil-A fall on the uh, hate to lose sort of? Uh, hey, 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 hate, hate to lose. They, they hate to lose. You talk about consistency. Them and Waffle House <laughs> right there. Body's a temple. <laughs> Kentucky is 14 of 14 from the free throw line. Tough move by Hammonds inside. Keeps it a four-point game. And he kept his pivot foot stuck on that floor after a couple of ball fakes and really good shoulder movement and strength by Rayshon Hammonds. Quickly is one of those guys who has shown he either likes to win or hates to lose. He is always in the gym. Calipari compares quickly to Shea Gilgis Alexander, Tyler Hero. It's interesting, Georgia playing zone, but when Hagens cuts through, they're going with him. Because Hagens against the zone, Ravi, he gets on that baseline and becomes a pick you apart passer. And Tom Crean making a, a really a detailed adjustment with his zone with a follow through action on Ashton Hagens. Good cut by Khalil Whitney, who is doing his best to impress the head coach, get some more time. Wheeler, the point guard, picks up his third foul. What would be the consistent things in your life? I right? just off the top of your head. Yeah. Things that you value. Right. Um, hmm. Sleep. <laughs> consistently do that. <laughs> working out. Working out is consistent. How about my guy Marty today? 
first time to work with Marty, and you and I are in there about 8.45, about 8.50, he comes in and starts throwing weights around. Just rolls in and, and goes sweating. Yeah. all metal on us. Marty. I was really proud of you guys this morning. I didn't especially expect to walk into the gym looking like I just woke up because I did and see you two in there sweating it out like jazzercise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marty's my new best friend because he lives on Lake Norman in North Carolina. One of the great bass fishing lakes in the entire United States. Marty's my new best friend because he says, Jimmy. Jimmy. That's sewn again by Georgia. And they'll lift up high and on a Hagen's cut. Just see if they follow him through to take away his passing ability on that baseline. Good, Good cut, cut by Richards. Indeed, in a lay-in, Hagen's found him. You are playing out in front of the play with your call, and Richards played out in front of the play with a cut. Very well done by both of you. Edwards still looks for his first points. Give Georgia credit. They've gotten zero from Edwards, and they have stayed in this game. Talk about Nick Richards against the zone. He does a terrific job. He's up here. He's sealing, but he's going to make this cut, Ravi, off of Ashton Hagen's one bounce of the ball. And it's a really good feel by Nick Richards to cut on time with a hard dive. And just he, he's playing out in front of the play. The first couple years of Kentucky, he played behind the play. The ball surprised him in certain spots. Doesn't happen much now for Nick Rich. Loose ball. Kamara comes up with it wow. and throws it right into Hagen's hands. Draws the contact. Instead, they're going to call Hagen's for creating it with his elbow. Watch Ashton Hagen's. I think, Jimmy, from behind, he makes contact with Edwards with his elbow to create the contact. Right there, the elbow. He created that contact. You know, I think it's the right call by Lee Cassell because Edward, Ed, Edward was going away from him, but the the, the, the arm bar from behind and the push off was absolutely the right call. Not popular in this state, but it's the right call. Kamara way off. Hagens pulls it down again. Let's, let's try it again. Take two. He got fouled that time. It's on Tyree Crump. That talking about Hagen's with ball in the middle part of the floor is becoming one of the most feared things to guard in this league. We talked about his lower body strength. He's coming at you to pound you at the rim. Hagen's looks for his ninth point of the game. Yeah, he's drawing five and a half fouls per 40 minutes. That's a team high. Richards and Quickly are behind him at four and a half fouls per 40 minutes. That stat right there tells you the aggressiveness he's playing with. Free throw way off. Hi, right, Wednesday night, Zion makes his long way to the NBA debut for the Pelicans. First to see Lowry and Siakam and the Raptors host the Sixers, but then Zion time. The Pelicans take on the Spurs, 9.30 Eastern time. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can watch it anywhere. In the preseason, he was great. And we anticipate him being great come NBA season. The body is still incredibly unique. May present challenges over the course of the season. Maybe some uh, minutes that they will watch and how often he's on the floor. But it is a unique, unique NBA player. How many guys before they ever play in an NBA game are known? That's a first shot. That is a first shot. Sure. Are known just by their first name. Before they ever play in a regular season NBA game, we all know Zion is Zion, and this kid is really frustrated. I talked about the extra juice that Kentucky plays with against guys like this, and Anthony Edwards is out of sync. He's not fighting for his position on this floor, and has not had a good game. And surprisingly, Georgia only down six with nothing. St stunning. Nothing it's stunning. From Anthony Edwards. 0 for 5 in this game. Cal going to screen the top of this zone. He's going to cut Higgins through. If he needs to go now with eight to go. And he kicked out short if they don't hurry. Higgins nice kicks play. it quickly. Three pointer, no good. Brooks the rebound up. And will it count? No. Waved off on the floor. Revy, I thought Kentucky got in their action about one second too late. And it shows up on the back end of the play. Keon Brooks, the ball's in hand when the red light comes on. I love the play call by running quickly to the corner. Just need to be a little faster. Coach, what stood out to you there in the first half? Um, 
We did some good things. I'm just trying to give them more and more space to go do stuff, figure out stuff themselves. Uh, but offensive rebound, our guards aren't rebounding. They had seven offensive rebounds when I looked, so it's probably nine. And most of them were their guards. So, or our guards not cracking up. We got to get that right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Marty. Ten offensive rebounds now for the Bulldogs, who stay in it 41-35, in spite of the fact that Anthony Edwards is 0 for 5. Hagens, Richards, they've been stars. Hagens with nine, Richards with 10. They have carried them all season. Time now for Kevin Connors to carry Seth and Lafonso after a break. Five, Anthony Edwards, no points to Georgia. Kentucky's done it in transition, Jimmy Dyke. Yeah, they have. Their defense has been alive and a lot of deflections around that basketball. I mean, Kentucky, they're ripping and running the other way. This is 11 points for Kentucky. In the transition right now, it's kind of been the separating point in this ball game. Anthony Edwards getting nothing done for Georgia, and they're only down, what is it, 41 to 35. Maybe the most impressive thing about the half so far, these rocket buster boots of this young lady behind us right here. Man, those things are special. Got the national champions lined up around them. Rocket buster boots. Consistency in the no, bootwear. Nothing sneaks by <laughs> the artist awesome. that is Jimmy Dykes. Yeah. <laughs> Marty Smith is with us as well. So Georgia started the game three of 20. Then they made six field goals. And hard to imagine you'd be trailing Kentucky by six. And Edwards would have a donut as far as number of points. But he's the type of player when he makes one, there's a good chance he makes five. Real quick. What I like about Anthony Edwards, you're watching him in the warmups. Body language good, interacting with his teammates. Plays the game at times like Zion Williamson did with a joyful spirit. And if you're Tom Crean, can you get number five in black going early in the second half? Kamara had a good first half, and he's dealing with Richards, and the finger roll goes to Monty Kamara. Georgia driving the ball now from all five spots. That to, to me, that's their best offense this entire season. And a turnover. And here's Edwards pushing three on one. Bounce pass and a good one to Fagan. And four quick points out of the halftime for Georgia. Pulls him within two. Good touch pass by Anthony Edwards. John Calipari says, I've seen enough. That's a bull rush bringing the ball with a finesse pass at the end. Georgia, the dogs, barking, <laughs> right? They have come into the land of the Blue Blood Wildcats. And right now, the dogs. Making a statement here in the second half. Maybe a pass and an assist will help unlock the key to Anthony Edwards. This quick run, quick run for Georgia coming out of halftime is exactly what Tom Crean wanted to see from his Bulldogs. He told them at halftime, reverse the basketball offensively all the way around the floor. Make sure to stay aggressive and continue to cut to the basket. He said defensively, we have to run back and make sure we match up with the middle man in the zone and continue to crash the boards. We can win this thing. Well, they already have one marquee win as they just parted the Red Sea for Ashton Hagens to go in for the layup. And that, of course, came against Memphis on the road. It's back the other way, goes Hammonds, and he misses. And a chance now for Kentucky to go on a little run. Max has been very quiet. Richards, good position, gets it to go. Again, if, if Nick Richards outruns your big for the 28 minutes that he's on the floor, you're going to lose the ball again. And Nick Richards that time just behind the play, caught up and got in front of the play. Three big guys this year in college ball, Ravi, have really gone to another level. Nick Richards, the Oturu kid at Minnesota, and Luca Garza, who is right there right now for National Player of the Year, the kid out of Iowa. Garzilla, I think it's uh, what Gosh. Seth Greenberg calls him back in the studio. He, he is the real deal, Luca Garza. And he and Luka Doncic. Alley Lucas. Montgomery picks up the miss. Can't get it to go. Richards battles. Shoots down on the rim. Can't get it to go. EJ puts it back up, and he's fouled. That's a huge height advantage when you have Montgomery and Richards springing like that. That's the energy I'm talking about with Nick Richards that is now there all the time. This dude just goes and gets a strong two-hand rebound. Quick on his first jump, his second jump. Nick Richards, if you're going to play your way through the Final Four this year, Ravi, you're going to have to play your way through size like Udoka Azabuki at Kansas, Petrushev at Gonzaga, Vernon Carey at Duke, 
Romaro Gill at Seton Hall. And Kentucky can do that. Luka Garza at Iowa. You're going to have to have the ability to hold up in front of the rim. Nick Richards can now do that and lock that anchor spot down for Cal. Hammonds will stay on the floor with three fouls. Edwards, tough jump shot. Oh, he gets one off the window. So an assist and now a jump shot that wasn't intended to go off the glass, but does in his first two of the night. And he, we know that he is a heated up type guy. And he can score 9, 10, 11, 12 points faster than anyone in college basketball when he's on. Kentucky better stay in his jersey. Hagan just pulls his way past Sophia Wheeler. I love your description of Bull because that's how he's playing right now. 15 straight games with five or more assists by Ashton Hagens. Tremendous on both ends. Watch Ashton Hagens after he makes this bucket. He'll do exactly what was done to Tyrese Maxey. Puts uh -oh. his hand down to suggest too small to guard me. And you flash back to what we saw in the first meeting when Anthony Edwards blew up Tyrese Maxey and said, look, too small. Hey, hey, oh, karma. Yeah, and that's what got Edwards so far in this game. And we'll see if it has any impact on Hagens. That extra sauce is not going to go away in this game. And Hagens and Anthony Edwards, they've gone up against each other since they were in elementary school. And there's, there's just a little extra juice between Anthony Edwards and that ball and Kentucky. Double team, they get the ball to Fagan and he lost it. Good job passing the ball, but Fagan lost it underneath. Yeah, Kentucky coming quick with a double team on Anthony Edwards when he had it in the middle part of the floor. Fagan's is feeling it. He's got 15. We saw how aggressive Nick Richards has been on the boards here to start the second half and throughout this game. Coach Calipari told us today during shoot around that Richards, Emmanuel Quickly, and Ashton Hagens are all playing the best basketball of their lives. Kentucky's coming on. It feels that way, and yet there's something that's a bit frustrating and confounding, I'm sure, for Calipari tonight to find his team only up eight in this game when Edwards has just two points. You talk about consistency. It's been an inconsistent first half in the first few minutes of the second half. Well, and it has, and that's uh, Cal's struggles right now is to play that entire 40 minutes at that magic level. And young club still trying to figure things out, but the play of Hagen's is tremendous. And you can no longer paintball Hagen's defensively. And what I mean by that, the defender on Hagen's never leaves the paint. You can't paintball this guy anymore. He's confident with that 15, 16 footer. He'll make a three every now and then just enough. So you have to come out on Hagen's. Now the game is in his hands. And what is that? Going downhill at the rim. Come tournament time, a guy like Hagen's is a huge asset. Brooks too strong. And it's Georgia. Tough pass, a little too late. Tomorrow was open for a while. Jordan Harris, a little late on the delivery. Man, take care of the ball. You know, you're in the game right now in Rupp Arena. Playing in a crowd, just circle that thing back out and go to work. Tom Crean staying in this 2-3 zone. And every now and then, though, they will follow a cutter just to try to confuse you, keep you out of your rhythm. Quiet night for Tyrese Maxey. He's 0 for 1, he's got just two points. Higgins is a passer now on the inside of that zone. Maxi floater, got it to go. Those Kentucky guards, all three of them, Ravi, they're really good at that floater jump shot. Over traffic, over length, practice it every day against Nick Richter, DJ Montgomery. What a luxury, too, Calipari has. Higgins and Quickly are so good defensively that they're the two guys that can switch off of Edwards, who drives downhill and now has four. That is what I want to see, Tom Crean wants to see, NBA scouts want to see all the time out of Anthony Edwards. He started in the slot on that side of the floor. I talked about it in the drawing at the under 16 the first half. And when he gets a full head of steam coming at you, it's almost impossible to keep your body in front of him. Hagen's nearly lost it, keeps it. Oh, too short, Richards. Wow. Cleans up. 
An out of area rebound by Nick Richards in Kentucky. Jogging back, celebrating the two. Hagens with a block. Richards with a block. Back to black. Back to back blocks for the Wildcats. Right, that, that's all recovery length and speed out of Kentucky. Because for 90 feet of that play, they were behind. But the last four, the speed, the length, the will to win, the will to fight, Kentucky covers it up right there. And then another, Nick Richards. Next level this season for number four. Unanimous induction into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and it's amazing. That's the, unfortunately become the story, the one vote that he didn't get when he should have been a unanimous. He and Larry Walker elected to baseball's Hall of Fame. Congratulations to them. And our former colleague, Kurt Schilling, gets 70% of the vote. The other numbers we're looking at now, the SEC standing, it's LSU on top. They have not lost a game. They're, they're in every game. They don't have a great shooter. They compete like heck on the boards, but they haven't lost. Well, they, they win all the close ones. Going yeah. back to last year, LSU has not lost on the road in SEC play from last year to this year. And you, you talk about they are vicious on the offensive glass. Kentucky got to be aware of Edwards now, who at least in this half has scored twice. He's got four. Hammonds misses. Nate Sestina in. And he's being fouled by Edwards. Well, Edwards being more involved in the second half. This is the play that might get him going. He's in the slot. This is where he lived in high school in AAU ball and summer ball. His natural instincts, Ravi, are to get to that part of the floor right there we can, where he can go right or left, right down the slot to the rim. The power part of the floor for Anthony Edwards. Sestina on the baseline, misses. Nick Richards battles for it, but he can't come up with it. John Calipari just told his team in the huddle they're surrendering far too many drives, much like what happened in Arkansas and much like what happened in Arkansas. Don't be surprised if you see Kentucky move to a zone. That's imperative then that they communicate with one another and find the shooters, namely Donnell Gresham and Anthony Edwards. Well, they're in one now. Edwards has it and fires from the wing. Got it! Where'd it come from? I'm telling you, that is his spot. And Tom Crean moved him around a little bit in the first half. He might have finally said, you know what? Just go back to what you do best and get us, will yourself, talent ourselves back into this ball game. What a shot. He's got seven now, all in the second half. Maxi. No good. Look at Richards in traffic. Came down with it, lost it. Georgia basketball. Anthony Edwards is a, a middle linebacker with a basketball with that body. And he can just go right up. He's so quick, Ravi, is his catch to release. Probably about five or six tenths of a second. That's outstanding for an 18-year-old kid to have that quick of a delivery. Has the ball again with 10. What a pass. Great pass. Hammonds can't get it to go, but what a left-handed bounce pass for the right-handed Edwards. We'll shoot some free throws here. And earlier during the shoot around this morning, I had a chance to sit down with Anthony Edwards. Your enthusiasm on the court, your smile, where, where does that come from? Uh, my parents, uh, they always have smiles. They always told me no matter what's going on, have a smile on your face. I just like to make my teammates happy and impact them in every way that I can. So I try to keep a smile on my face, even though sometimes I might not be having the best day. Yeah, I've noticed that. How do you deal with, with not the best days? What, what's the Anthony Edwards plan for when you have a rough game? How do you deal with that? Um, I never feel like I have a rough game. I just feel like I could have did something better than what I did that night. But I don't really dwell on it. I mean, I think about what I could have done and move on to the next game because it's a league, so we always got a game coming up, so I just worry about the next game. Uh, and lastly, for all you've done through basketball in your career, what, what challenges does the college game present? How is college different from what you've done so far? Um, they just double team a lot. Like, me coming off screens, they double. They try to deny me the ball. And, like, the schedule come out, like, way before they we actually play the team, so they're able to scout me and do all, you know, all the stuff that they need to do to be able to guard me. But that's about it. I mean, everything else is the same. Have a great game. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Really a terrific young man. He lost his mother and his grandmother to cancer uh, on the fifth day of the month, and that's why he wears number five.
You know, you talk with him about his dad and his shooting style. Yeah, he shoots, he shoots the ball with such ease from NBA distance. And I asked him, I said, who taught you to shoot? He said, my dad taught me when I was probably three or four. And he said he started me off on a low goal with a small ball, which is exactly, it's exactly how you teach young guys to shoot. So his form has always been good, even as a three or four year old. Then you just increase the size of the ball as he gets older and you, and you obviously take the height up of the rim. But that, that, that kind of formula, yeah. it keeps your form good all the way through. And this kid's got it. Tough shot from the free throw line. Anthony Edwards starting to warm up now with nine all in the second half and a three point Kentucky lead. He really wrapped that screen hard into the jump shot. You're not going to block his shot when he elevates at that 15 foot mark. He deflected that one. They get it to quickly in the corner for three. No good. Keon Brooks playing productive minutes. Gets that to go in the window off the offensive rebound. He is a ball gatherer, is Keon Brooks. That's off the foot of Anthony Edwards. Keon Brooks has energy, in the, and the ball finds him often because of it. He's a ball gatherer, a loose ball guy, and that's what rebounds are at the end of the day. It's a loose ball above the rim, and he reads the ball well in flight on the release. He got his eyes on the ball, kept his feet alive. Kentucky trying to push this thing out again. It's one of those you watch the film. Tumani Kamara will realize he got out. Hustled on yeah. that play. Anthony Edwards, I talked about his ability to wrap a screen. What do I mean by that? He comes off shoulder to shoulder. Sparks should fly when he come off this tight. Right here, bam, wrap it. Feet down, elevate, release, rotation, result. Anthony Edwards starting to be a player. Can't wait for it. Tennessee and Kansas kick things off for us. And then we will be in Lubbock, Texas. It's going to be the first trip for a lot of the Kentucky folks to get to Lubbock, Texas. And both teams have knocked off at AP number one this season. And then the Gators are going to be tested against Baylor, but vice versa. Baylor's going to be tested against Florida, who's in a slugfest tonight with LSU. Hagens and Nebhardt are similar in a lot of ways in their defensive abilities and their size. They both present challenges to those guarding them. Yeah, they do. You and I are going to see a game day shoot around at Texas Tech like none you've ever seen. You're going to be blown away by Chris Beard and the preparation and the intensity and the toughness and the fight that those guys are going to bring into that ball game. Green now with a set play, just the old fashioned high post screen down, pin down. Edwards, tough pass, a little bit behind the cutter, Christian Brown. Alley oop, no good, but the follow by Juzang, who's been in the right place now twice. That's just an effort play by Johnny Juzang to find the backside of the play in transition off of the miss. Juzang and Keon Brooks starting to earn their stripes right now in John Calipari's eyes. Got to be careful now for Georgia, 63-54. That three no good. And Maxie's got Go Brooks up. open again. Good defense. Edwards went up, now four on two the other way. That was an Ashton Hagens type steal in the open floor by Anthony Edwards. Great interior pass. Hammonds, he found Brown behind the defense. Mark that play down, Ravi, because had that transition basket been converted, this building would have popped. But the steal by Anthony Edwards, and things just calm right back down. Tuesday being aggressive offensively. Had that ball mocked away by a. Reach from Brown. The defensive play by Anthony Edwards. The anticipation boom right there. And that, again, he's quick in his jump shots, so therefore he's quick off of his feet in defensive transition. And there's the back end of the play, which really kind of silenced Rupp Arena for a spell. Yeah, they were all on their feet. Yeah. You could kind of look around Rupp, and they all sat back down. <laughs> Hagens to the hole. Finger roll, no good. Richards can't get it. How about Georgia winning the rebound battle in this game? And Look out. Hagens uh, picked his pocket from behind. Quickly to the hole. Gets it to go. And Ashton Hagens' defense again turned that into two for Kentucky. Well, you know, there's not a better transition defensive guard in college ball than Ashton Hagens. He can take away a play better than anybody else at the college level between the circles in the middle part of the floor. 
Ashton Higgins is a handful. You have to screen him in the half court. You got to move him. But in transition, he can do some stuff now, but just off of instincts, power, and quick hands. We talked about Ashton Higgins with his assists over the last 15 ball games, getting five or more, impacting the game, making winning plays, and there he is again tonight. Tremendous length as Crump launches a three, and he's a much better shooter during practice and shoot arounds than he has been in the games recently. Misses another one. Yeah, Kentucky will tell you with all the depth they have and the quality players that they have, Ashton Hagens is a difference maker. He's the one guy that they cannot afford to have in foul trouble or get hurt. Kenny Mangu and Mahente, dream team tonight. Sports Center after Miami Duke. Countdown to Zion's debut Wednesday night. Woj's take on the impact he'll have on the Pelicans and the league. Legler breaks down Clippers, Mavs, and Tiger will go inside his expectations for the season. Sports Center after ACC hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tiger was asked about the majors record that he continues to pursue, Sam Sneed's record, and the importance of both. He said, let's just take it one day at a time. Yeah. He gets set for the Farmers Open out of the place. He's had great success in the Hoya and Torrey Pines. Kentucky really starting to punch the paint now about any time they want to. That time is off a delayed out-of-bounds play. Just got in isolation with a guard. And E.J. Montgomery with a very soft release and a high release. Edwards on the bench. Brown three, no good. And a run out. Brooks ahead of the field. Passes it down. Outstanding pass as Brooks got behind the defense. And the first instinct from quickly was to look up and go. Well, it's, it's all five spots that Kentucky can outrun you if you're not dialed in. Maybe Brooks got a little bit of a leak out early, but man, the dude can really run. Richards can run. McGon who can't on this Kentucky team? I love the, how fast quickly got his head up. One bounce, bam, and the ball was thrown out extremely well Kentucky now on a 12-2 run just over the last just under four minutes starting to put distance and separation between the cats and the dogs and this should be Anthony Edwards time again if you're Tom Crean you would think well Edwards went to the bench for a second he'll stay on the bench it's fascinating. We'll see Kentucky a lot in the next couple of weeks here. Yeah. And to see who ends up kind of earning the playing time and trust of Calipari, because tonight, Juzang's been really good. Keon Brooks has been really good. On a night, Maxi hasn't been great. Other guys are just kind of tapping you on the shoulder and saying, remember, I'm, I'm here. And that, that, that was a must basket and a must possession by Georgia. Tom Green took the timeout, ran a good little ball screen, and then a, a side screen on the inside to get that elbow jump shot freed up. Look at quickly his speed. He ran right into Kamara. Oh, he called a block. Oh. Well, it looked like Kamara had just been standing still. Kentucky's so good at their guards playing from the four-point line and in. They, they don't hug the three-point line. Kentucky doesn't, Ravi. They get outside of it and above it. So they catch the ball coming downhill. Their first step on the catch is already sending them toward the rim. Very important part of their offense. One of the country's great free-throw shooters, Emmanuel Quickly. He had come into the game shooting 92 percent, and he missed the first. Yeah, number 12th best free-throw shooter in the nation. One of two, lead 12. Anthony Edwards has only been fouled three times in this game. He leads the SEC at about seven and a half fouls drawn per 40 minutes. Stay active and stay involved if you're five in black right now. Trump draws the foul, good aggressive take as they did their best to try to get Edwards free on the baseline. 
That'll be the third on Emmanuel quickly. Timeout here at Rupp. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Speaking of slam dunks, Keon Brooks with a punch. Marty Smith, Jimmy Dice, Carl Ravitch. Take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance tonight. Well, it's been Ashton Hagens, and to, to sum this guy up, Ravi, a, a coach like Calipari, he can do a lot of things for his guys. The one thing he can't do is battle for his guys. Ashton Hagens is a battler from the opening tip to the closing tip. This dude wants to win, and he impacts the game in so many ways. You see tonight, six out of ten from the floor, three out of four from the free throw line. He's gotten on the defensive boards, seven assists, only two turnovers, and three steals. This is a guy that wants to win and is starting to spread amongst those Kentucky players. His voice over the last eight minutes was the most, the most important voice to Kentucky the other night at Bud Walton Arena in Arkansas when the building was at an explosive level. Standing next to Anthony Edwards, the two both grew up in Georgia, played all sorts of games against each other when they were younger. Now, he likes to win. Does he hate to lose, too, Hagen? I believe he does. So does Marty Smith. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, Kentucky's had some issues finishing games. There's been several times this year when they've got out to double-digit leads and then surrendered them. We talked to Calipari about that today. And back to the player-driven team motto, he said, why are we doing that? That's up to you guys to figure that out. You must hold one another accountable. And just now in the huddle, he reminded them of that. Now it's time for you to finish. Execute, make sure the ball is in Ashton Hagen's hands so that he can make plays for everyone. Well, he just did on cue. And if there was if there was a room for improvement part of Hagen's game, it was his outside shooting, which tonight has been on point. Yeah, because there's been no hesitation at all. He's taken good looks. Just can't, Kentucky just can't get that separation where you feel like, okay, we're fine, especially with a lethal score. Anthony Edwards still on the floor that can get going as quick as anyone in college ball. Look at Hagen's an ankle breaker, couldn't convert. Keon Brooks blocked by Fagan. And here's Edwards. Good bounce pass to Hammonds. Boy, great vision from Anthony Edwards. They call it T. Did Hammond slam the backboard after the bucket went through? That's a heartbreaker for Cream. Things you can't do. I mean, you don't like to call if you're Tom Cream, but it's the right call. The pass by Edwards with the left hand in traffic was unsportsmanlike. Be two shots for Kentucky. Right there, just a, plays you can't make. Hang, but it's a slap right there. Right call. That's a tough one, and it is certainly a technical foul, which will allow Kentucky to shoot free throws. Yeah, I thought that's right. It's a Class B technical foul, so it's just it's just one free throw. It doesn't count as a personal foul, but it counts as an unguarded point that Kentucky just got because the. Just a little loss of discipline right there by Rayshon Hammonds. Making matters worse, I believe Queen looked at Hammonds and said, did you hit the backboard? <laughs> I think he might have said no. Well, the film doesn't lie. The film don't the lie. Film don't lie. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Not the film that I just saw. Eight-point advantage, Hagen 17. Gets it to EJ. That's a two, and it drops. That's good offense. Just simply screen the top of the zone and have the shooter flood behind on the backside of the play. Very well done by Kentucky. Good game for EJ Montgomery. He's in double digits with 10. Kamara, no. Maxi goes to get it. 10-point lead, six to go. Kind of a dangerous time in this game for Georgia. Can't let it get too far further away than 10. Kentucky in their circle action, baseline runner action. A lot of times it will end up with an empty oh, corner. Oh, he had oh, yeah, Nice slip. That's a simple play. Cacao is very simple with his offense. He's running about four or five things right now, and that's about it. 
Talked about that last possession though by Kentucky that got him a basket. Montgomery, we throwing this thing forward, hold it right there. There's the ball screen, now watch. Montgomery doesn't hide, he's gonna relocate right there. And just on cue, Hagens knows exactly what he's looking for. If the roll is covered up, which is Nick Richards was the roll guy, the backside of the play is gonna be open. Montgomery sticks the open shot. Trump knocks down the first one. You know, you look at the record of Kentucky, 13 and four, and a lot of people were concerned about the losses that they had, bad losses. Their four losses have been by a combined 15 points. That's not much, is it? That's really close yeah. to being unbeaten. And look at their wins. The ones that still jump out, the Michigan State win, the Louisville win, who just went and won at Duke, tells you all you need to know. Kentucky is gonna be a major player in that NCAA tournament. No question in my mind. Three of the four losses for Kentucky this year have been by three points. Alley oop. Beautiful. Richards went up over Kamara. And they'll call the follow on 10. Right, but that's one of the four or five actions at Calipari. Yeah, that, that, that stack action. He's stacking his bigs in the middle part of the floor. One will dive and one will pop. Simple action, hard to guard. Kamara's third. Richards at the line. the kind of season Nick Rich is just having as he rolls that one in. Next on ESPN, Duke and Miami ACC game at Cameron Indoor, and you can see it live on the ESPN app. Blue Devils starting to play a little bit better, a little more consistent. They've won three straight, four or five against Miami. Over on the SEC network right now with about 6.20 to go, LSU leading Florida by 7, 66-59. They try to stay unbeaten in conference. 16 for Richards. Just so hard to keep LSU off the offensive glass, and you mentioned Duke. Top 10 offensive and defensive efficiency team right now. The only team in college ball right now that's in the top 10 in both. Still 10, so they isolate. Edwards on Hagen, spin move, met by Montgomery, who got hit in the face, but he'll get credited with a block. Hagen's. No good, who's it off of? It'll stay with Kentucky. Boy, E.J. Montgomery playing tough. Yeah, he, he came over. Montgomery comes over to win the collision because you know what's going to come. And he, that's, a, that's a legal play by Montgomery to go straight up, and you know the collision's going to be there. He took a shot, but he threw up a very strong, tough wall for Edwards to have to play through. Very well done by Montgomery. I talked about he could be that defender that just kind of comes out of nowhere and grows as the season goes on. And a lot of times the defense will lead to offense. He's got 10 in this game. He's looked a little more comfortable shooting that ball. Richards mismatch with Fagan on him. He gives up about eight inches. He tried the alley-oop. Instead, it's Montgomery. Contact and a good bounce pass that Richards had go off of his hands. Tough because of how low it was, but he was open. <laughs> you know, Cal, you, you never like a turnover if you're a coach. But he's okay with that one because Kentucky was guilty of just trying to move that ball, man. That's, you can live with those. Anthony Edwards in the slot is a problem. He's in the slot. Quickly gave him nothing. Kamara banged into Richards in a turnover. And two Kentucky players slow to get back into the offensive side of the floor, Montgomery and Richards. You, you can't read where the pass was going to go any better than Hagens just did. Playing out in front of the play as a defensive point guard. Hagens got four steals tonight. Richards three blocks in the game. And Hagens just a blow by. Gotcha. Easy play against Hammonds. Shouldn't say easy, he made it look easy. Yeah, but the, the, the hesitation is what made the play special by Hagens. Because he went, then he stopped, and then bam, goes again. That second burst by Hagens, so difficult to stay in front of. Ashton Hagens doing it on both ends, Ravi. The, the defensive play with tremendous reading the play right here, just sniffs it out. Bam, I know where the ball's going, I've got it. I'm ripping and running the other way. And right here, watch the hesitation. The hesitation and the blow by Ashton Hagens. Wow, stuff in the stat book tonight. 
right, guys, this is the SEC on ESPN, and Hagan's to seven points having a huge impact on this one. 19 points, eight assists, five rebounds, four steals. In 31 minutes of action, he has been phenomenal. And the most indispensable player on this Kentucky Wildcat team. You see Hagan's talking on the floor. I, I will say this, great teams, Ravi, they spend way more time talking to each other on the floor than they do complaining to each other off the floor. Kentucky has grown in a lot of areas since the last time I was in Lexington about a month ago. Their voice collectively has really gone to another level. I saw it late in the Arkansas game, but great teams are so good at talking to each other on the floor and limiting the complaining they do off the floor. Kentucky is in that boat. Well, in that Arkansas game when Calipari was thrown out, Hagans put his arm around him as he was walking off the court and said, we have it. We got it. And they did. And they did. Now we've got to burn a little clock, leading this one by 12 with 3.40 to go. Kentucky will close out games as a legitimate high free throw percentage team and three guards that seldom turn it over. Wow, that's, that's an anchor to go to right there. John Calipari in, in years past would not even consider going to Nick Richards to close out games. Now it's either option one or option two. Closing in on a double-double is Nick Richards. Eight rebounds to go with his 18 points. Keon Brooks with a tackle there. Fellas, it bears repeating just how young George's roster is. Nine freshmen, ten newcomers. And Tom Crean told us earlier today the resilience right now is just so low. He said they bounce back really well from bad games. They just struggle terribly to bounce back during the game. Keep playing. Don't let disappointment become debilitating. And that's something they fought all year long. And we're seeing some of that here tonight. Yeah, it's, it, it takes courage to not get discouraged in real time. And Tom Crean is not the only one dealing with that right now in college basketball. shot over the seven foot five wingspan of Nick Richards. The question moving forward for Tom Crean as he continues to try to recruit and build is you're going to lose number five. And right. Obviously in this game tonight, you know, he hasn't had a huge impact, but he clearly is the best player on the floor for Georgia with his passing, with his hot streak that he had there. And now can you build on what was a recruiting class that had several top 100 players, not just one? Yeah, Anthony Edwards made signing with Georgia cool. So that, that's the trickle-down effect of having a guy like Edwards on your campus for a year. So now can Tom Crean continue to bring in the type of kid, the type of guy, like I know my guys. Tom Crean lives by that. He knows exactly the kind of guys that are going to fit with him. But it is a, it's a talent war on that recruiting trail in this league. And this league, in this year, is seeing the teams like Alabama and Arkansas, LSU again, Florida, yeah. Kentucky, will make every game that those teams play against each other very competitive. Yeah, the hires in this league recently, we talked with Tom two years ago, Eric Musselman, Buzz Williams. Those guys are Mississippi State, Mississippi, yeah, the same, same, same stuff. Kermit Davis at Ole Miss. You got that on the They're going to get a goaltending on Montgomery. That's, that's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's a bad, I think they're going to look at it. Maybe. I saw that as a spin move, and 5 and 20 for Georgia are spinners in that lane. I, I thought Ed was just spinning through. The, the elbows weren't out. They were horizontal with the floor, and I think quickly was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
Let's hope he's okay. Yeah. Emmanuel quickly, the sophomore guard. Plays saxophone, piano, drums, and he's hearing some bells right now in his head. Right there, he got clipped with that right elbow. And it ends with EJ Montgomery going up with a goaltend. Right there. Yeah, we're 21 seconds away from being able to review the goaltending call. What they are looking at is the elbow to the head that was established. And I, I, that's a basketball play. It's, it's, it's hard contact. It's just a basketball play, unfortunate. Yeah, just a normal basketball play. And those, that's going to happen sometimes. I mean, it happens right here in our booth. Occasionally, an occasionally elbow will does. fly. Yeah, absolutely it will. <laughs> Marty muscled his way into the open. A woman came up critical of the fact that your jacket in the back yeah, hasn't what, been... Uh, what is that called again? Uh, she called a placard? Yeah. And Something she, in the she back. She needed it to be ripped, which yeah, I will do I, now I, for I, you. I don't I don't get it here. Okay. It's, these, this just needs to come apart. Now it's good, oh. and you look... Except for the strings that are now dangling. Where did you get this jacket? I, I, I was told when I bought this that that's a new thing to leave the back of the jacket zipped up with. Oh, no, you look so much like it. that. You got to let it flow, right, Marty? Watching Ravi try to be a tailor for, for Jimmy is yeah. maybe the most unfortunate thing I've seen thus far in 2020. Although I, I will say, sir, you have a future in the tailoring business. Thank you very much. Marty, we will top that. Don't worry. You think, you think that's unfortunate that you saw that? Just wait for the next seven or eight weeks with us. Yes, yeah, she was dead set on making sure I know. Watch out. Right, yeah, yeah, now watch out. That was a tailor-made pass on cue, right? Heck of a dribbling exhibition by Maxi as well. Kentucky puts you in a bind, because if you don't come off, the guard's going to finish. If you do come off to stop the penetration, they throw the lob to the backside. Watch Maxi dribble through traffic here. Yeah, very, very well done by Maxi. Keep his eyes up right here. You attack the rim, and you're just really in a bind when you're the last line of defense. You come off of Richards, it's an automatic pop. Quickly picks up his fifth foul. Another productive game for Emmanuel Quickly. The lead with 12 points. He had his three-point field goal shooting. He'll have back-to-back -back games in which he's gone one for five. But how about the numbers Nick Richards continues to put up every game now, like 20 and 8. Well, R Richards is getting right at 14, 15% on the offensive glass when he's on the floor. That's a very high rate. One of the better ones in the country for a big guy, especially in conference play. Yeah, K Kentucky's got all the pieces. They got the, they got the bigs, they got, they got the guards. The, the wing in that position is starting to become a little bit more of a strength for him with Juzang and Keon Brooks. What Richards does this season, relative to the years prior, there's a fluidity in his game. It used to look stilted, like it didn't come smooth. Right, right. Now it's so fluid. That finger roll he made in the first half, which he got fouled, that wasn't Nick Richards last year or the year before. Rather, we, we, we tend to forget or not talk. He didn't start playing ball on Nick Richards until he's 14 years old. The game is still so new to him. But man, as he is his learning curve just shot up like a rocket the last five or six months. Three from Crump goes down. Crane quickly calls timeout. Nick Richards uh, just does so many things so well. First of all, it's his energy. It's at a whole other level. His conditioning is terrific. He can play hard now for those 27, 28 minutes that he's on the floor. He's always going to win those plays around the rim. The dude is seven feet tall and can run like an athlete. That, that right there, that, that finesse finish, that's some special stuff now. And if he's just going to continue to catch the eyes of NBA scouts because he's so young. He can jump out and cover ball screens and take on and play low in those situations. He's a load now that you have to deal with when you look at that scout report to play against Kentucky. His last six games, I mean, he takes about 15, 10 to 15 shots a game. Last six games, he's missed five tonight. Two, one, three, four, two, and five. That's how many yeah. shots he's missed. He is an incredible accurate because he shoots so close to the rim, obviously. Yeah. He hasn't made a three this year, but he did end the shoot around today by making the half court half court. Absolutely he did. He's right, he's right at 68% from the two-point part of the floor. Anything above 
63 or 64 for a big is in it for a coach that said we'll take it Great play, great athleticism by Maxi. Yeah. <laughs> Caught it as he was flying out of bounds. Hagen quickly steps back inbounds. And that'll be the fourth foul on Anthony Edwards. They, they may look at this again. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they will. Absolutely they will. There's been a lot of chippiness in this game and going back to the game at Athens when Anthony Edwards popped the jersey at halftime and Kentucky came out in the second half and took control. But they're going to get him. They're, they're going to get Higgins. That is not a basketball play. There's no way in the world that's a normal basketball play to get your elbow up into the jaw of the defender. I, I, I think they have a case right now for an F1. Right, let's send it back to our studio as we continue to see what's happening here, guys. Yeah, and Ravi, over on ESPN2, the game is over, essentially. Kansas State, Kansas, keep an eye on what happens after the block shot. Silvio De Souza, Daniel McCormick, Marcus Garrett, all involved with what appeared to be a member of the Kansas State team who is not in uniform at the time. It is a melee, and they are still sorting it out right now, Coach. This type of behavior is absolutely un unacceptable. De Souza stands over after the block. It was a clean block, but then he antagonized the whole situation. Then the Kansas State guys coming off the bench. That's just unacceptable, and what happened after that is absolutely disgusting. Wild scene that's being sorted out right now in Lawrence between Kansas and Kansas State. Jayhawks up big. Ravi? A terrible look for D'Souza after that block to go and stand over the player. And to Seth's point, you never come off the bench. But, boy, that is a, that's a disturbing look between Kansas and Kansas State and completely unnecessary and uncalled for. Yeah, the, the disturbing... Uh, that's that, that's something that's going to have ramifications. There will be suspensions that will now factor into games on Saturday, if not beyond. That, that's way beyond a guy leaving the bench. Holy smokes. That, that's about as ugly as we've seen in college ball. A long time, a long, long, long time. Edwards pushed off of Richards, and this one's getting a little chippy as well. Fisher better have a tight whistle. The remaining 105 of this ball game. They get a five-second violation. Did the official come over and tell you what they ruled on that ed ed elbow? They, they saw it as just a normal basketball play. I didn't see it like that. I don't think you, I, that's not a normal play to get your arm up and your elbow into the guy bringing the ball up, but play on. Three from the corner. Oh, there Anthony Edwards gets that to go. And lo and behold, it's a seven point game. They gave him a two, so it's an eight point game. And Hagens gets fouled. They called it a two. Edwards. Picks up foul number five. Then he's out of the game. The only guy that you probably couldn't afford to foul out just fouled out if you had any chance to pull off a miracle. All right, so we have free throws here. Obviously, the situation in Kansas, Kansas State. Let's go back to our studio and Kevin. And Ravi, want to let you know Miami and Duke over in Cameron Indoor Stadium underway right now over on ESPN News. Keep in mind, Duke, two straight losses on the heels of that nine-game win streak. You'll see it here on ESPN once things go final in Lexington. Miami and Duke underway right now, Ravi, over on ESPN News. Have they settled that situation, Kevin? Kansas, Kansas State, have they separated everybody? They, they've separated the teams, but the officials still kind of sorting out what exactly has to happen before this one goes final. Of course, Kansas uh, be part of that Big 12 SEC challenge. T Tennessee goes there on Saturday. And uh, if there's not multiple suspensions on both teams, I will be shocked. The Big 12 now conference office has their hands full to go back and look at the tape and just pick apart what really went down. But that was a horrible, horrible situation. Precipitated by the block and then the follow-up antagonism of the player who had the shot blocked. 
will be in Lubbock. Kentucky will be at Texas Tech. That'll be a huge test. Vanderbilt devastated again this year by injuries. February 1st, a huge game against the Tigers of Auburn, who went on the road this week and got drubbed twice. Crump in traffic. Montgomery picks up the block there. And now Maxi will try to burn as much clock as they can if they can avoid the foul. Juzang in traffic. And Rev, we talked about Hagens and Richards, right, rightfully so. This guy has impacted the game now. I, I think he's kind of found who he's going to be as a player. Get some dirty points, some body blows, some rugged plays, and, and defend your tail off. And Montgomery has done that tonight. He won the collision at the rim with Anthony Edwards earlier. He continues to get in there and, and just be a force and not afraid to take a, take a hit across the bridge of the nose. And just the growth of Kentucky individually and collectively really starting to show itself to my eyes. Six rebounds. He's got ten points. Hammonds open three. No good. Kentucky's going to improve to 14 and 4, 5 and 1 in the conference. Another good effort by Georgia. But another game in which they will come up short against Kentucky. 89 points for the Wildcats, the most they have scored in an SEC game this season. For Marty Smith and Jimmy, our entire crew, <laughs> welcome back, Eric Mobley, our director, Scott Matthews in the truck. We'll say so long from Rupp, Cameron Indoor next, Reese Davis, Dickie V, and Brooke Weisbrot. Carl, thank you very much, and welcome to those of you who just watched Kentucky finish off Georgia.